the students have a chance to discover more about themselves through art and collaborative work. Students also get a chance to try out digital art, something which is rather relevant in the recent world. Lastly, it will be performing arts. This domain is generally split into two parts, where students get to participate in music and drama-related activities. In music, students will be exposed to music creation and the usage of unfamiliar musical instruments, as you can see in the above picture. During which, students will then be placed in situations that require them to showcase certain SEL competencies. Okay, I'll go through the second part now um, regarding what is so unique about PEL in ADPS. So these are the main features of PEL in ADPS that make us unique. Firstly, the assessment part, as well as the CCA-related exposure part. I'll go through um, each one slowly. So the first part is about assessment. This is actually a new initiative, and um, it's just rolled out this year. So we are targeting the P2s first. And the purpose of this is actually to provide feedback for the children to increase their self-awareness, as well as to reaffirm positive traits and behavior. The students will be assessed based on how well they demonstrate the SEL competencies via teacher's observation during lessons. And actually only the teacher's assessment will be shown in their report book. And student self-assessment will also be done for the purpose of them understanding the difference between perception and, uh, sorry, the difference between self-perception and social perception. And should there be a big difference in terms of the results, teachers will then reach out to these children and speak to them to discuss about it. And yeah, that's about it for assessment. Next will be regarding CCA-related exposure. Each domain contains activities, the four domains that I mentioned earlier, actually contains activities that provide exposure to CCAs in our school. And <clears throat> for example, in music, students will have a hand in making their own kuchong using simple materials such as a small box and some rubber bands. And they will do activities related to that, which mimic the actions of playing an actual kuchong. And with this, students are more well informed when making CCA choices when they are reaching primary three. Um, the, our school also has CCA recommendation letter where roughly about 55% of the P2 children actually get at the end of the year. And this recommendation letter is received by children who show exceptional skills in certain areas of interest and is based on what teachers observe during PEM subjects such as PE, art and music, as well as during PEL. So just to note that actually this is merely a recommendation based on the child's strengths observed by third party and it's actually not a formal invitation to join the CCA. At the end of the day, it is still the child's <clears throat> decision based on their interests. And as for those children who do not get a recommendation letter, they should still be able to use their PEL experiences to assess their own strengths and their interests. Um, okay, this brings about to the end of our webinar today. So um, we'll proceed on with our Q&A section now. Okay, um, so for the first question, <clears throat> one of you asked, how is this kids excel different compared to PEL? They seem similar. Um, Hi everyone, I think I will answer that question. Now for Kids Excel, uh, it's actually a, a, an enrichment program. So for Kids Excel, they focus more on uh, science experiment, science uh, concepts, and there's also an outdoor um, education segment which they have not started yet. So currently what the Kids Excel are doing is actually more on uh, experimentation with science uh, enrichment. Okay, and Kids Excel is actually uh, not compulsory. So this is um, an enrichment by an uh, external vendor, which parents actually um, sign the children up uh, for that session. So it's a 
actually it sounds similar to PEL, but it's actually very different from PEL to PEL. Because as you hear from um, uh, uh, Miss Rachel, uh, we have actually different domains. We have um, outdoor education, we do have uh, visual arts, we have um, uh, games and sport and such. So um, the, the in PEL is more of the different skills that they learn. Uh, so it's a, a bit different. The, the curriculum is actually uh, different from what they are doing in uh, Kids Excel. Yep, I hope I answered that question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Madam Yeni. Um, there's another question. Uh, what is SEL? Okay, SEL actually stands for Social Emotional Learning, where there are um, <clears throat> values, character values such as self-management, social awareness, self-awareness, responsible de decision-making, things like that. So yeah, SEL actually consists of this. So PEL actually focuses on developing these SEL competencies in the children. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so um, maybe let me uh, answer a little bit more about the SEL competencies part. So um, every lesson in PEL, we actually focus on one of the SL, SEL competency. So to make the learning a little bit more explicit for the children. So for example, let's take uh, art, for example. So in the domain of art, every week, every term, the children are actually exposed to a domain each. So for example, in term one, this particular class will be tasked to do art domain. In term two, it will be outdoor education. In term three, will be performing arts, so on and so forth. So every class, there's a different schedule. But at the end of the entire year, everybody, the whole cohort will get to do all domains. So take, for example, the first, this term, a class will be doing art domain. And in art domain, weekly, there will be lessons. And each lesson actually focuses on a particular SEL competency. So for example, this lesson will focus on social awareness. So the teacher that's teaching the lesson will highlight to the children that, oh, today we are going to, the main focus of today's lesson will be on social awareness. The, the activities that follow after that will actually have a chance, will actually give the children a chance to experience what it means to have social awareness. And perhaps maybe we, um, during the activities, conflicts may occur. And that's when the children actually can actually learn. And there are learning, teaching points for the teachers to actually highlight that, oh, um, in this particular situation is when we want to witness social awareness. So we make this uh, SEL competency learning more explicit during the lesson. Yeah, so as much as um, there are activities surrounding um, CCA-related skills, these um, activities actually supposed to bring about the learning of the SEL competency of the lesson itself. Yes. Uh, maybe let me answer the next question. In music, except Kuchung, still have any other options? Yes, of course. Um, I gave Kuchung as one of the example. So the the children actually do um do things like singing, creation of music, um, yeah, experience things that actually our school CCAs offer. So yes, uh, the children do do other things except uh, aside from Kuchung during the music domain. Okay, and um, let me move on to the next question. Is the PEL curriculum the same across all primary schools or only ADP? Okay, um, in general, there are certain um, objectives and uh, objectives to achieve for PEL curriculum. Okay, so um, however, in ADPS, we have certain unique features that are on top of those um, basic objectives that PEL is supposed to achieve. So those mentioned like the assessment portion as well as the CCA-related skills portion. So for across all schools, there are basic objectives to achieve. However, in ADPS, we have something extra. So yes, I hope that answers your question. And next uh, question will be, how will this support for kids? How will this support kids in their DSA choice? So yeah, uh, as I mentioned earlier, 
the kids will be exposed to more CCA-related skills in hopes that they can actually discover their interests and then and also discover their strengths. Following that, um, when they are supposed to make their CCA choices come primary three, hopefully by then they are more well informed with the experiences that they had in Pell. And then once they chose they choose their CCA, that's when they actually um, will focus more on developing that portion of their strengths as an interest, which can then actually um, help them towards their DSA choices. Yeah, so um, of course, during then, during the lessons itself, we also talk about things like decision-making skills and all the SEL competencies that could actually um, help the children make these informed choices. So yes, this is how we actually support, how PEL actually leads to the general direction to support the children in, with regards to DSA choices. Yes, I hope that answers the question. Um, I'll move on to the next one. Will there be a PEL curriculum? Examples or activities planned for the P2s that will be shared with the parents. Um, okay, with regards to this, um, all these activities, actually, we do have teachers who actually take photos of their children as they are doing the lesson itself. And the teachers do update the parents on platforms like Class Dojo. And also there are certain events in school such as COL yearly, um, it's called the Celebration of Learning. That actually happens at the end of the year uh, where the school actually uh, goes, uh, shows, the par shows parents what actually happens during lessons like PEL. So there will be media, there will be photos and videos, stuff like that for us, for you parents to actually see what goes on during the lesson itself and what will the children learn. So yes, thank you very much. I hope that answers your question. Okay, and um, another question: As parents, how do we involve? How are we? How do we involve to support the child, particularly in PEL? Oh, okay. Uh, thanks for that question. So, as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> PEL actually does focus a lot on SEL competency, building the SEL competencies in the children. So, as parents, um, I think that we, at home, possibly after less after the PEL lesson, you can ask the children, "Oh, today, what is the SEL competency?" If let's say the children answers, oh, today we, we learn about social awareness. Perhaps as parents, we can actually speak to them a little bit more um, in depth, maybe give them uh, more examples at home or situations at home that actually require them to show such a SEL competency. Maybe then on everyday, everyday life when they're out of school, maybe when they're outside playing with their friends or things like that, um, actually we can highlight that moment, that teachable moment where, oh, uh, in this situation is when you actually showcase social awareness. Can you remember in PEL, we actually learned this, you actually learned this in PEL. So things like that in teachable moments outside of school where parents can support the children. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. And let me answer the next one. For music instruments like Wuchang and piano, is it compulsory to do through school or we can arrange through external trainers or teachers as well? Okay, um, for, of course, um, for our school, we actually offer Kuchung as a CCA. So um, it is not compulsory to go through school if uh, parents would like to sign their children up for extra lessons outside of school. Of course, um, you are welcome to do so. Um, however, for our school, we only offer Kuchung as a CCA. So come primary three onwards, should the children choose Kuchung as a CCA, then uh, yes, that will be compulsory. Otherwise, of course, um, parents, you're welcome to sign your children up for extra lessons outside of school. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Okay, um, maybe meanwhile, while waiting for the questions to come in, 
uh, let me elaborate a little bit more about how um, the teaching of, how, what is the difference between PEL as well as lessons like PE, art and music. So maybe um, I would say that, okay, let me take um, games and sports as an example. So yes, we do um, use some of the skills that the children learn in PE in the lesson itself. However, the lesson itself actually focuses more on how we can use these PE skills to build about SEL competencies. So for example, let's take um, one activity. So one activity in uh, games and sports is actually where children will learn <clears throat> how to, where children are supposed to throw and catch a beanbag. So they have learned how to throw and catch a beanbag in PE lesson. However, the activity itself will not be just about learning how to throw and catch, but it will create a scenario that requires them to work together with friends to throw and catch and achieve a certain outcome. So with that, while they work with their friends, that's when we actually build their SEL competencies where sometimes uh, conflicts may occur because of teamwork and stuff like that. And that's when we actually focus, oh, um, the teaching on SEL competencies through those conflicts. Of course, if there are no conflicts, um, we still do highlight the fact that, oh, in this situation, that's when we actually want to show social awareness. One example, this is, this is one example. Okay, uh, another question. The children can take how many CCA programs at once? Okay, actually questions regarding CCA will be shared, uh, or rather uh, more information about CCA will be shared in another uh, session regarding uh, CCA choices and stuff. But um, currently, CCAs are actually, uh, one CCA choice is actually recommended because um, we, would, we would like the children to actually delve in a little bit more and strengthen and focus on strengthening their interests and strengths so that um, eventually they are able to use this as an option for DSA. So yes, uh, recommended the children actually do take just one CCA choice. Okay, uh, another question. Will there be badminton offered at ADPS? Uh, currently, we do have, um, we do not offer badminton as a CCA um, in our school. Actually, more information about what CCA options we have are found in our school's website. So if uh, whenever you're free, you can actually head to our school website and there are more details about what uh, CCA choices our school has and a little bit more details about each CCA. Yes, I hope that answers your question. Okay, with regards to CCA, um, I think um, some of you are a little bit more curious about how PEL and CCA is linked. So maybe I can uh, explain a little bit more. So <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, during PEL itself, the children will be doing certain skills that um, sometimes uh, will be actually explored further in particular CCA. So for, take for example, visual art CCA. In school, we have a visual art CCA. And in PEL, we also have a visual art domain. However, inside the visual art domain, we actually use skills that children will actually practice in the visual art CCA itself. So for, uh, take for example, <clears throat> a certain way of drawing. So um, they don't do this way, certain way of drawing in their art lessons. However, they do it in CCA. So the P2 children actually have a chance to try out an experiment. How does drawing a certain, in that particular way, feels like? And of course, they're not um, expected to do it perfectly. It's just an exposure for them to try and experience it. So through this experience, we hope that children are more aware that, hey, um, I actually have more interest in this particular uh, domain or this particular skill. And then they can actually um, further develop that particular interest when they, go for, when, when they decide to choose that CCA come primary three. Yeah, so I hope that's a little bit clearer. Okay, um, a question came in. My kid wants to learn everything and want to attend so many classes. It is confusing and difficult to determine his interest and strength. Any recommendation to address this confusion? Okay, uh, I think it's a very good thing that the ch your, your child is very interested in everything. So um, I think perhaps um, we, will, we may not want to limit their 
their interest in one particular area only. Um, I think it's good that we expose them to a lot. However, maybe at the end of the day, um, more exposure is better so that they are more aware of what are the different kinds of skill, in, skill areas that um, outside of curriculum we should have. So things like, um, as I mentioned earlier, drawing, things like music. Um, sometimes in school, we do not have this. Uh, we don't offer this. Like just now, the previous parent mentioned about piano versus kuchung. So our school only offers kuchung, unfortunately, and we don't have piano CCA. So if let's say the children are interested in piano, I think um, it is not a bad thing. Um, it is good that they are more exposed to. However, um, with regards to finding out which one that he's interested in, I think maybe through more exposure, the kids can actually find out which of them, which of, of the skill they are, they have more, they are stronger in, I would say. So through that, perhaps as parents, we can guide them in their thinking. But ultimately, of course, decision making should come from the child themselves. And parents should serve as a guide rather than a force. So um, perhaps through conversations after they are, they are after, if let's say they are interested in particular certain particular areas, perhaps parents can guide the children through questioning and through conversations to find out a little bit more about why they're interested in this, what is it about this that they're interested in, and things like that. So maybe through specific questioning, you can actually help the kid realize what they actually want to focus on. Hopefully that helps you. Uh, let me go on to the next question. Sometimes my kid cannot share much about what he learned in PEL. Can PEL teacher help to update in pupil's companion? Okay, um, <clears throat> we understand that sometimes it's a little bit difficult for young children to articulate what exactly did they learn in PEL. Perhaps maybe they can only say, oh, in PEL today we play balloons or something like that. But um, yes, in for, especially for P2s, we actually have a reflection booklet. We are, we are just starting out this year. Um, so in this particular reflection booklet, the children actually do write down what they have learned during the lesson itself, at the end of the lesson. So um, through this reflection booklet, they can actually bring home and yeah, you can see they are learning from there and perhaps you can ask them a little bit more about what happened during the lesson. Perhaps then with something uh, visual, they can actually ex explain a little bit better. Yes. And... <clears throat> I will move on to the next question. How does school evaluate the interests of the individual child? At the end of the year, is there a way to know what the children has developed through PEL or what other interests that the child has? Okay, um, for every lesson, actually, um, in a, the teachers are told to look out for certain things, certain skills that, for example, um, a CCA requires. So let's take uh, games and sports, for example. So um, for all sports CCA in general, there are skills like um, how, how well the hand-eye coordination is when you catch a ball, um, reaction timing and things like that. So these are particular skill sets that we have actually spoke to the CCA teachers in charge about um, that they want to see in their children. So for example, um, let's take uh, Ushu CCA for, for example. So for, for children in Ushu, we would love for them to be a bit more flexible, to have certain um, skills from gymnastics. So with that, we actually translate it. We highlight that inside our lesson plans to say that, oh, hey, um, Ushu requires the children to have this. So in this particular lesson, if let's say the children exhibit these particular skills, the teacher will then highlight this, this child out. So of course, um, not every child is good in everything and different, different children are good in different things. So um, through, that's why we expose them to many different domains, many different kinds of skill sets in hopes that the children are more exposed, they're more aware, and um, the children are, I mean, sorry, the teachers are also able to observe a little bit more through the different, uh, through the various activities. Yep. <coughs> sorry. And um, of course, there are, what are some examples of those skills will be fundamental movement skills, leadership skills, creativity, ballistic skills, things like that. So all these are what is required, what the CCA teachers are actually looking out for. So um, let's say for scouts or brownies, they're actually looking out for leadership skills. So in this particular lesson for PEL, we will be a, a bit more explicit in terms of um, 
trying to draw out the leadership skills of the child, trying to draw out the creativity of the child to have activities that allow the child to exhibit these skills so that it gives us, it gives the, the teacher also a chance to observe, to be able to observe these particular skills. And of course, for the children to also be able to be aware that, oh, hey, I will need these leadership skills if I would like to join um, Brownies. And uh, um, Brownies is a, is a chance for me to develop these leadership skills if they're interested in that area. Yeah. <coughs> At the end of the day, um, we want to emphasize that um, this whole thing is a process um, from P1 all the way to P2. This making a CCA choice is actually a pretty big decision, I would say, at such a young age. Since um, we um, only, we discourage the change of CCA in between from P3, or, P3 all the way to P6. So with that four years of CCA, um, it's, a, it's quite a big choice for a child, for a P2 child to make. The fact that they have to stick with their decision for that whole four years. So that's why we would like Pell for, uh, to give them a chance for the first two years to actually experience a little bit more about each CCA so that they are more well informed. And from there, hopefully they are able to um, see where their interest lies and um, be a little bit more um, informed like, to make their decision at the end of primary two. Um, there will be a session um, to teach the children about decision making with regards to CCA um, at the end of towards the end of primary two. So not to worry too much about that. There will be more information to yeah for you parents as well. <clears throat> Ultimately, we would wish to highlight, uh, we wish to encourage parents that uh, we would like to leave the decision to the child um, because at the end of the day, they will be the one going through the CCAs themselves. So um, parents possibly you can encourage them or like speak to them a little bit more to guide them through their decision rather than to dictate their decision for them because they, they experience the different kinds of um, activities and skill sets during PEL itself so they, they would be very clear about um, what their interest is and yeah so we hope that parents are able to guide them through their decision making process. Um, a parent asks, we still get a lot of feedback from kids when we ask them on their interests on certain CCA. They say that they don't know. Um, <clears throat> yes, I think um, currently, uh, because they are so exposed to so many, some, sometimes they do get a little bit, oh, I like this, I also like this, or I, I like everything. So um, hopefully, um, towards the end of the year of primary two, they would have experienced plenty already. So we hope that, um, I think at the end of the day, um, parents are able to also help to support them or rather to guide them by asking specific questions at, at the end of PAL lessons. Perhaps um, every, when they're home, they can probably ask them about, um, like, oh, what particular things do you do in PAL today? Maybe have them to describe that and then ask about how they feel about doing, going through those activities. How, um, what do they think about it? Are they confident in it? Do they want to explore a little bit more? Things like that. And then um, hopefully through each, intentional questioning, um, the children are able to be to see things a little bit clearer. <clears throat> and perhaps from then, then they are able to see that, oh, hey, actually, I do really have a bit of interest in this. Um, and then when at home, perhaps you can also encourage them to explore those interests out of, of curriculum time. <clears throat> yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay, another question. Can the child join CCA of their interest or would they need to have the skills to join the CCA of their choice? Okay, of course, we encourage the joining of CCA via the children's interest. <clears throat> so as I mentioned earlier, um, <clears throat> PEL provides information for the CCA um, teachers um, to provide them with the recommendation letter. So this is just a recommendation. <clears throat> At the end of the day, it is still based on the child's interest. So uh, no, they do. it's not a must to have the skills to join the CCA of their choice because ultimately CCA is to develop those skills and develop those interests. So yeah, we hope that through PEL, they're able to more importantly find out what is their main interest rather than to find out uh, specifically what uh, skills they will need to join that particular CCA. I would say the area of interest will be the focus <clears throat> at the end of the day. Okay, another question. 
Um, do you think it is a good idea for PEL teachers to share with the parents group on PEL lesson they did for the week? Okay, um, I think uh, I have, some of you have been mentioning about sharing the lessons for quite a bit. So I will take this su suggestion back and hopefully um, we'll be able to come up with something to show parents weekly about <clears throat> a process to show parents weekly and update you guys about how um, the ch your children are doing in PEL and what exactly they're actually doing. So yes, I think that actually that is a good idea for PEL teachers to update the parents weekly so that you guys are also able to support us uh, back at home. So thank you for that suggestion. I think, can I just add on with regards to this? Uh, I mean, uh, what we also want to do is um, to promote um, communication from, from parents and the children as well. I know some of you say, have, have uh, I mean, some parents have feedback to me and say that, oh, uh, when I ask my child what they do in school, I don't know. Or I do this and that's it. Yeah, so perhaps instead of just asking what you do, uh, you can actually probe a little bit further. If the child say, oh, I do, uh, I play balloon, then, you know, there are certain questions which um, uh, you can ask them. Okay, so what do you do with the balloon? Uh, what is it that you do with your friends? Or, you know, those kind of questions. So to actually uh, get some responses from the children instead of just um, getting like, I don't know, uh, from, from, the pair, uh, from the pupils, I mean, from your child, all right? Or just a one word answer. So perhaps um, if, if, um, if the parents can actually have uh, some kind of uh, like a storytelling time, you know, that kind of session with the children, they could actually uh, share with the parents what is it that they have learned in that particular lesson itself. Um, on another note, perhaps if um, you would like to know more about how your child is doing in terms of the social emotional skills in, in PEL, not only in PEL, but also in, in mm, the other different uh, types of uh, the, the other different lessons, it will also be good for you to actually ask the teacher. Um, one, one way is actually to use our meet the parent session, which is um, coming up in uh, end of term two. So instead of asking um, how they are doing specifically in English and maths or mother tongue, for example, very academic specific, uh, this is also one area where we can um, uh, get feedback from the teachers because we are looking at the holistic development of the child. So if we can actually uh, have conversation with the teachers with regards to their uh, SEL competencies, that will also be a way where you can find out from uh, the different teachers, from the PEL teachers especially, how the child is doing in, in the PEL lesson. Yeah, so um, that, that is also one way where I, I understand that some parents are asking, how can I get feedback of how the child is doing or in the different kind of um, uh, domains in PEL lesson? Yeah, so this is actually one way where you can actually have um, conversations with the teachers um, to find out more about how your child is doing in PEL and in which areas do you think that they are uh, good at and in which areas they are um, um, still having a little bit of weakness and how they can actually uh, move on from there. So like what Madam uh, Miss Rachel has actually shared just now, for the P2s this year, they will actually be given um, um, like a holistic report of how the child is doing uh, in, in the different domains. So moving forward, we will also be doing it for the P1s. So currently for uh, this year, it is more for the P2s. So the P2s will actually know what are their strengths and perhaps also look at their weakness and how they can actually uh, improve on their weakness. And from there, perhaps you can also see uh, where their interests lie and that will probably help uh, in making the decision for, for uh, the CCA choice uh, at the end of the year yeah so thank you okay maybe to add on to that um as we mentioned earlier there will be a holistic report and that's when actually um, parents can hold deeper conversations with your child if you can see um they are excelling in certain social emotional learning competencies perhaps from there you can actually uh, elicit their responses a little bit more or, or like uh, if you find that they are a bit weaker in certain SEL competencies, that's when we actually highlight that at home and uh, watch, watch that out a little bit more, how they behave and how, um, perhaps through questions and through conversations with your child, you can actually help, to, help us to improve that as well. So um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. And with regards to the quota for CCA, I think... Uh, Okay, uh, Mr. Shah will be answering you with regards to that. Okay, at the end of the day, um, I think 
uh, why this whole SEL competency thing is so so big or why are we focusing on that is because um, we hope that through um, building these SEL competencies, they are able to, um, it's a bit linked with behavioral issues. Lah. So um, if they are able to exhibit all these SEL competencies well, we believe that um, they are able to, um, how would say, uh, they would be better able to communicate with their friends to manage relationships a little bit better. Yeah, and hopefully in the sense that um, they will reduce their behavioral issues a bit. Okay, uh, Miss Rachel, can I just jump in for a while? I think, I think um, I'm uh, first and foremost, uh, hello to all parents. Uh, thanks for the many questions. It seems that a lot of uh, uh, are keen to find out about CCA or even DSA. So I think for CCA, there is, uh, of course, we look at the number of uh, competitions requirement for students for the particular CCA, as well as our availability of teachers that we deploy for the particular CCA to ensure the safety and the well-being of your children. That is, those are the key consideration that we have uh, in order to, de to determine the number of students per CCA. Then the next thing I'd just like to add a bit more about uh, student interest. I think it's good that um, you, you allow the kids to be exposed to discover their interests and their talents. But one thing we also need to ask our children will be the fact that they also need to ask uh, liking is one. Are they any good or not? So if they if they tell you that uh, I'm interested to play the piano, then then again it must be backed up with some substance or some worth, so that they need to be able to understand. Okay, I'm willing to put in the time. I'm willing to put in the effort to get better, to be better, so that in the event that uh, you wish to pursue that particular CCA or interest further in secondary school via DSA he or she will be in a very good position to be the best and to be able to stand out and carve a niche for himself or herself. At the same time, even at this present moment, I do hope if you have con your child is considering or thinking about it or have an have a inclination towards a certain area, you know, it, it doesn't stop us from asking ourselves, okay, if he or she wish to pursue even further and what's required of him or her. What are schools even asking for? So, so that we have an end in mind also, and so that we know how then we can help that particular child to be developed. Uh, parents, not to worry too much. We will have our town hall on CCA as well, uh, and also on DSA coming up somewhere in March or April. Then again, uh, I just like, like to emphasize CCA, we are hoping for it to be our student choice. Give them the chance to choose the CCA that they're willing to commit not only to commit, they're willing to put in the time, the effort to get better. Okay, uh, okay. back to you, Miss Rachel. Okay. Okay, Um. maybe we'll give a little bit of time for any more questions. You guys have any? Okay, or if there's any one last question that you guys may have. Okay. So um, thank you parents for attending this webinar. We hope that uh, we have answered your questions and queries. Okay, um, all this um, information, don't worry, we'll upload it on our website. So in case you need to refer, you can go onto our website to refer to them. Yes, so uh, thank you very much parents for attending this webinar. We shall end the webinar now. Thank you parents for coming.